Hello there, I'm Sandy Alnock, and I want to welcome you to part two of a two-part series. Who knows, it might be more. And this is Galaxy Watercolor that I did in my previous video. And this is the one that I'm creating today. Yes, it was two bears that were in the hot air balloon. The two bears in the hot air balloon in the previous video have now landed. They are part of a stamp set here by Colorado Craft Company. And when I received this, I thought I've got to make it part of a pair of videos. That would be so funny. So I've stamped it using the Misty and some sticky notes, but I stamped it at an angle so they'd be pointing and looking at the right place and then used a compass to draw a planet that they're on and a planet that they're looking at. Because I figure if they were flying through the galaxy, they were looking for a new planet. They were looking for a new home because somebody needs to get all of us off this ghetto planet that is falling apart. <laughs> so that's what our bears are doing. They're out hunting for a new home for all of us. And they're going to be on whatever planet they've landed on in the galaxy that they've located and they're looking at something that's going to look a little recognizable to you. I'm painting an irregular galaxy this time. In the previous one, I did the spiral galaxy. And this is more of what you'll see in the galactic watercolor class, if you heard about that in the previous video. And I will link you to it in the doobly-doo, as well as show you pictures of what's in that class, what kind of pictures you'll learn. And I'm just adding a whole bunch of color spraying some water, letting it move, trying to retain some white in the middle and getting darker areas on the outside because it's the dark and light contrast that's going to make the drama in the picture. So very thick pigment dropped into wetter pigment tends to get really nice soft feathery edges and you can add second layers and third layers as needed. It's always better though, to try to get more pigment on the paper the first time around than to try to figure out how to do it later and to add, add more pigment because that just ends up with lots of challenges. But in the class, I do a lot of layering so you'll get to see how you can do that because I know that's what a lot of people will end up doing because that's what I did when I first started painting galaxies a couple of weeks ago in preparation for launching this new galactic watercolor class. So since the bears are going to kind of disappear into a shadow, I did that on purpose so I didn't have to worry about all the grasses that were in the stamp since I was masking those off since I, because I was turning them to point to the, the planet they're looking at. And then I used thinner watercolor with more water in it toward the top and thicker watercolor toward the bottom. And it'll take me a couple of rounds to fuss with it and fill in all the areas and then get it to be really black. But you can go back and forth with watercolor when you keep it wet. That's one of the things that we tend to work really slow and, and we, we just hope that it's gonna turn out and then all the edges dry and then we're like, no, what do I do? If you can keep it wet, it, it depends on whether or not you use enough water with your pigment in the first place. It depends on the speed you work at. And of course, if you're working in an area where your paint dries really fast, that'll make a difference. But also a lot of it is just learning how to keep the edges wet. If you're working on something and you, you want it to be able to be moved, you want to be able to adjust it, then spritz it with some water. And, you know, just a real light coverage is enough to sometimes keep it movable so that you're able to continue creating without having to stop everything. But you need to keep an eyeball open at all times. And that's kind of what I was doing here. I ended, <clears throat> excuse me, ended up putting an extra layer because I wanted it to be really, really rich, really, really dark because they're going to be in the foreground in contrast to the big planet off in the distance that they're looking at. And that required putting a lot of contrast in that foreground image so it would really stand out against all those dark colors that are in the sky behind them. So there needs to be enough contrast between them. So then comes the planet. They're looking for something Earth-like. So I decided to just use some splooges of color that are earthy colors. 
So threw on some blues and some greens and just let them swirl around on the paper. I wasn't trying to paint continents or anything because they're looking for a new planet. I don't know what the continents look like on this new planet. So I'm going to have some dry areas, some green areas, some water areas, and then leave that edge at the, the bottom section that's facing toward the light source, which is that galaxy in the background. I'm going to leave that white edge on the planet. Get it all dried up. If you want to add more layers onto it, which I decided I, I wanted to add a little bit more. I got some, some cauliflower bleeds there and decided to just add more pigment and mask that to hide it from myself so I didn't see those places where I ended up with a bleed. Add some more colors to it, dry it again, and then I could add the stars in the background. So I've got some titanium white watercolor grounds from Daniel Smith on a toothbrush. And the amount that flicks off of the toothbrush depends on how wet the pigment is. So sometimes you'll want to mix up a special batch to make it easier to splatter the paint because sometimes it just won't come off the brush and you want to have plenty of stars out there. So there is my finished cool painting. Their arrival in the new galaxy, they've found us a new home. Isn't that awesome? I cannot quite explain to you how they survived the hot air balloon trip through the galaxy, but you know, that's why I called it fantasy art today. So there you go. I did a couple other versions with this stamp set. This is brown bears sitting on grasses, looking up at a crazy planetary scene. And then the rabbits, which is a little tiny rabbit stamp, but boy, do they have a view. Isn't that gorgeous? Tomorrow over on my Instagram, I'm going to be using this stamp set to create a whole bunch of cute galactic cards. So you're going to want to join me over there, link in the doobly do and information on that one. And for today and tomorrow only, there's a special deal for you, my followers at Colorado Craft Company. And the information on that is in the doobly do, and I will delete it once that is over so you don't get confused. But if you're interested in getting a special deal on stamps, check that out. The intermediate mini class, Galactic Watercolor. I'll show you a quick preview of the kind of paintings that you'll create in that if you choose to take that class. As I said, it's a level three. So level three is going to require that you know a little bit at least about mixing paints and that sort of thing. But there's five paintings in it and they're a lot of fun. Just as much fun as today was with these crazy galaxies but they'll be taught in real time. This was sped up today, but you'll get real time videos in the class and I will see you guys later. Take care. Bye.